This lesson is one of the services brought to you by Sika along with the other services that we offer. So we have free PT classes from 11 o'clock to one o'clock Canberra time and IELTS classes from two o'clock to four o'clock every day from Monday to Thursday, uh, Monday to Friday, in fact. So there are other services that we offer along with these uh, free classes. So if you or your friends are looking at uh, taking free classes or for any migration services, please feel free to uh, come to us and ask us for our help. So like we discussed yesterday, let's start off with uh, listening questions. So yesterday we practiced a bit of speaking and today we're going to practice listening. So PT listening is for a total of 48 to 51 minutes, that your total, that's your total time. And you have about eight different types of questions. Four of these questions are called not important questions and four are important questions. Four are not important because we already have a hack for it, number one. Number two is because these questions are time consuming. And third thing is you have very little time and you have to manage it wisely. And your most important question type, which is your right from dictation, is right at the end of listening. And it appears in that particular order. So you have to manage your time well so that you spend enough time for your right from dictation because it can give you about 50 points uh, towards your listening as well as towards your writing. So that's why it's very important that you manage your time enough so that you have plenty of time for right from dictation, for fill in the blanks and, um, uh, and these two questions. So these are our eight different types of questions. Listening is divided into two sections or two parts. The first part of listening is called summarize spoken text. So like we have already discussed this, I'm just giving you a brief uh, review, that's all. So what is summarize spoken text? You're writing a summary of the audio that you're listening to. You're listening to a lecture, your job is to write a summary. The summary has to be written between 50 and 70 words long. So not a word less than 50, not a word more than 70, strictly within your word limit. And each summary carries 10 minutes, I mean 10 points, and it gives you points towards your writing as well. And you're allotted 10 minutes per summary. So you'll have about two or three of these summaries in your test. So if this summary is for two, if you have two summaries, then the section is for 20 minutes. If there are three summaries, then the section is for 30 minutes. Any doubts? No. no. You, rem you remember this, right, from the strategy. So what are you tested for? You're tested for listening, you're tested for writing, and three or four things that you're being marked for. Grammar, vocabulary, spelling, content, form. Okay, five things. Grammar, vocabulary, spelling, content, form of this. Grammar, you don't have to worry much, you just follow the template. Vocabulary, you try and get words from the lecture or from the passage, your vocabulary will be covered. Spellings is your big headache, you have to worry about your spellings if you're weak in it. But since both of you are quite okay with spellings, I think it won't be a big problem for you. And then your content is important. Your content is achieved when you can take points or when you can take words from the lecture. And then form is your What's form? Can you remember? Form is your? Tenses are an active and positive voice. No, form is, in PT, form is always your um, word, word limit between 50 and 70 words. Every time you see this marking criteria form, that means your word limit. So in PTE, form means word limit and it's a very important criteria. The moment you cross your word limit above or below, you'll be marked down, okay? So very, very careful with that. So how you marked, you get two points for vocabulary, two points for grammar, two points towards spelling, two points to content, two points to form. So two into five, 10 points each. I mean, 10 points per summary. Am I being clear to you? Yes. So everything carries two points. The moment you cross 70 words, the moment you don't reach 50, you're marked down by one or sometimes two, okay? Spellings also, the moment you cross more than two spelling mistakes, you'll be marked down to one. So be careful about these. That's very easy to lose points and it's a very silly way to lose points as well. So let's move on to summarize spoken text. So this is our template. 
uh, your job is to memorize this template. If you have not memorized it already, now is the time to do it. Will you guys try and do it? By today. So we'll try and do as many summaries as we can. See, it's very easy. The speaker provided brief information about and you write your four keywords. So here you can choose to write keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, and keyword four, or you can choose to take a chunk of a sentence or a statement. You know, when we are practicing right from dictation or when we are practicing repeat sentences, we listen to a huge chunk of sentence, right? You can use the same thing over here. You can write down words in chunks of sentences or in words only. Am I being clear? Yes. Okay. okay. I think uh, the first time that we practiced this, uh, I showed you to draw two or three columns. I mean, make four columns and write down your keywords in groups of four. That's what we did, right? So we can either do, do that or you can even take chunks of statement, just like how you memorize repeat sentences, just like how you memorize your write from dictation. You take down chunks of statements. You can either do that and also or write down keywords. Okay, it, it's totally up to you. Any doubt, okay. So uh, take a picture of this because we're gonna do this question type now. So listen to the audio, make columns, make four columns, write down your keywords in groups of four or take down chunks of sentences or a combination of both. If you can take down chunks of sentences, do it. If not, at least four keywords and then try and put it in here. Okay, so if you're putting in keywords, separate it by a comma. If you're putting in a chunk of sentence, then do it as it is. Any doubts, guys? No. Nivedita? No. Your silence is telling me that you are thinking something, but I just want to know if you're having a doubt. No, no, no. I was busy with some other thing. I'm free now. Okay, all right. So both of you are okay, right? So shall we start off with this? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to play an audio. We're going to do at least three or four of this. We're just going to practice. This is a practice session and a feedback session. So you practice, 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 and I give you your feedback. All right, so without wasting any more time, let me bring up my um, real PT screen. Please wait for me. So did you manage to make an account with APUNI as well? Yeah, I have. Okay, APUNI is very important for your reading, okay? So there is a big chance that your questions repeat from APUNI's prediction file. And I also showed you Language Academy's uh, website as well, right? So the prediction file is also set to be quite effective. Okay. So listening. Beautiful buildings. Not that, I'm sorry. So summarize spoken text. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. Yeah. Yes. Please give me a minute. Just a minute, please. I'm sorry about that. No worries. You know how kids are, they take the complete advantage when you're helpless, you know. <laughs> and you're having as long as in the yeah. So I have a six year old, she's got her school <clears throat> vacation. She knows I, I won't move from here, so she's having the time of her life. <laughs> okay, so ready? I hope you guys are ready. I'm going to take notes as well. And without wasting time, the count of three, one, two, three, something random. Okay. okay. The design of buildings is important according to architectural textbooks. At its roots, architecture exists to create the physical environment in which people live. But architecture is more than just the built environment. It's also a part of our culture. 
It stands as a representation of how we see ourselves, as well as how we see the world. There are polydesigned buildings, but also some great building works. In the Victorian era, architects designed buildings based on bricks and other materials. The design of floors was based on lighting as it would not only affect appearance but also health conditions. The materials that buildings are made of also matter. For example, the design of ground floors must ensure that the building is able to withstand the weight of the higher levels. In the 20th century, many old buildings with design floors were demolished or modified through a natural selection process, which means they are an altered state rather than an original state. This is an application of Darwin's theory of natural selection to modification of old buildings, which means buildings should adapt to the new world to survive or be pulled down. So, it's argued to be unfair to criticize the demolition, although some people believe that whether to be remained should be decided based on their nature and functions. As the world became more and more connected, the styles evolve, but even in modern construction, there is still an importance in honoring the cultural nuances in the built environment. Okay, now I want you guys to put it into the template. I'll give you about six minutes, put it into the template. So I know this takes 10 minutes, but I'll give you about six minutes more. Uh, from now and I want you guys to put it into the template, put it on the chat or send a picture if you've written it down. Okay. I'm going to attempt it as well. Okay. Good morning, Sergeant. My name is Hello. Good morning, Sergeant. My name is Ruth and I'm your PT trainer for today. Uh, we just uh, doing an exercise for listening. So we've timed ourselves for six minutes. I'll talk to you soon. So don't worry about anything. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, we're just doing PT listening. And I'll talk to you soon. We're just doing an exercise. I'll talk to you in another three or four minutes. Is this your first class? Mm, yes. Have you taken PT before? Yeah, I did. You have taken PT before? Yeah. Okay. And uh, did you have any training or anything or did you practice it by yourself? Uh, myself. Okay. And what's your desired score? I got the 60 overall. You wanted 60 for your TR and you got it. Now you want that's for my new student visa. Actually, I need the seven. I want seven. Okay. Each. 
All right, seven in each band. Do you know when you're planning to take your test? Uh, not yet. Not yet planned. Yeah. Okay, so but, so it's your first lesson. Did you have any strategies or are you aware of all the PT strategies and techniques and all that? Yeah, I have consulted with the different friends and they have the different, different techniques. They told me different, different techniques. So I follow my techniques. <laughs> Okay. And are you from Nepal by any chance? Yeah. All right. So uh, last time when you took your test, you got your 60, you said, right? Yes. You got, uh, so which is your challenge area? Is it speaking or writing? Actually, there's some difficulties in the filling the blanks of reading, something like that. Yeah. Most You're reading, fill in the blanks. Yes. Yeah. What about repeat sentences? Repeat sentences. Yeah, that that are also about the. I think the score is get a uh, score carry from the reading fill in the blanks more. So it's it's become quite tough for me. Okay, so give give it another five minutes. I think um, the other students they are practicing it as well. Just we uh, finished. So what we were doing is we had a strategy class so far. And now we are having practice sessions. So these students are familiar with the strategies and they are practicing for uh, the listening modules. I'll uh, just check their work and I'll uh, give you a plan for today. Please give me a minute. So, uh, Nivedita, I'm checking your answer. I'm just posting it on the Word document so that I can see it better. Okay. I can see, I'll just scratch this out. This is your, the speaker provided brief information about the design of building. First of all, the speaker discussed architecture, built environment, culture, and representation of ourselves. Secondly, the speaker also mentioned Victorian era, design of ground floor, 20th century and demolitions. Thirdly, the speaker also highlighted natural selection to modification of old, I think it is buildings. In a nutshell, there was important information on criticized demolition, cons uh, criticized demolition connected world and modern construction and Darwin theory. So only for the last one, you put an and, you can separate these words with a comma. So this is a job which is pretty well done. You're well inside your word limit. I cannot fault it for the life of me. So it's a pretty well done job. Bulor, have you done anything? Yeah, I have a chance. This is. Um, are you sharing your screen? No, no, just enter the chat. Um, okay, I found it. I'm copying it and pasting into the Word document and I'll correct it if there's any mistake or I'll give you. Okay, the speaker provided brief information about design, building, architecture, and environment. First of all, the speaker discussed culture, present, world, and politics. Secondly, the speaker also mentioned Victorian era, right? So that's okay, but it was, unless you're very sure, don't write it. Era, material, condition, and example. The speaker also highlighted ground flow. Uh, is it a hyphenated compound word? Nivedita, are you sure it's a hyphenated one? I'm not too sure. Uh, 20th century natural selection and building. In a nutshell, there was important information on new world, people, demolition, and construction. That's a job well done. No problem at all. So this is how many words? Let me select it. There's about 59 words well inside your word limit. Like I said, it's a good job done. Can we do one more? Or uh, just give it, uh, give me, can you guys do uh, question number, can you log into real PTE and do question number 15 and 16 while I explain Sajin here, just uh, a brief um, explanation about listening. Can you do two summarized spoken texts? I'll give you about 12 minutes. I'll time you for 12 minutes. I want two summaries, uh, maybe 13 minutes. And I'll, can you put two summaries in the chat? Yep. All right. So uh, two summaries, maybe question 14 and question 15. 
What did we just do? Question 14. Oh, we just did question 15. So maybe question 16 and question 17 of real PTE. So realpte.com 16 and 17. The time now is 11.30. I will expect this by 11.42. Okay. I'm timing you for 12 minutes. Bolor, are you okay with that? Okay, time starts now. Uh, Sajin, I'll just share with you what we were discussing about listening. Sorry, Ruth. Yes, yes Bolor. How can I turn off your speaker? <laughs> so you can just, I'll just, uh, you can just, you can you see, um, there's something called mute. Uh, if you just see three lines, three lines near my face. Three dots, yes. sorry. And there's something called mute. You can just click on that and you'll mute me. Um, option. Uh, or rather disconnect the audio. Yeah, oh, but she needs to listen to the audio. No, Wait. there's no mute. Uh, mm. Can you um, reduce the volume on your computer then? Yeah, but, but I'm going to listen, you know, the same computer. And, yeah. yeah the, so, what, be, yeah. so give me a minute. I'll just take a screen. If you disconnect that. the audio, you can then connect it back when you want. Oh, how to do that? The same three dots. Yeah. You have Chat so just, settings and below that disconnect audio. Okay. Mute mute my audio and then uh but but I am talking to Sajin here. Not you should not do that, Ruth. Uh, yeah. She will she can do, do that. that. Okay. Can do that. Oh where where is it? You have the option more when you touch that. That's the third option. Chat so you, yeah, setting. you have a line. Can you see mute, stop video, security? Can you see there is a line on your Zoom? So when you look at more. Um, okay. View options. Um, no, there's no. Okay. I think I should take a screen grab and I'll take a picture and I'll show you. Just give me a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Balor, can you see this picture over here? Sorry. Can you see this picture over here? So can you see there is, if you just just hover your mouse on the on my face, just hover it, you can see these. Yeah, there's just the two options, chat and pin. There's something called mute. No. Uh, share my screen. So where's your Zoom? Your Zoom is right here. Hmm. Okay, can you can you maximize it? What you just saw? No, it's not maximized. Okay, can you use your three fingers and move it up? Move your screen up so that you see what windows are open. Yeah, there can.
so uh, can you can you accept my request please mm -hmm. so grant access oh there's a lot of things uh, click on zoom please on your right side click on zoom Laura, over here on that near the privacy. Can you click on the Zoom thing? No, right here. Where? Yeah. Yes. But it's not the active to choose. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can play it on your phone after you uh, reducing the volume here. Yeah, take your time. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem. So, Sajin, uh, what I'm trying to do here is we're trying to do uh, listening PT questions. So, I'll just give you a briefing on that. We have already done the strategy, but I'll just lead you through that as they solve those questions. So PT listening is the last module of your exam. You have about eight different question types in listening. So there are eight questions in listening and it's your one of your most important module. Are you aware of the transferable scores from listening to other modules? Uh, somehow, yes, but not totally. Okay, so PT listen, uh, what, how to start? Okay, I'll just do about PT listening today. So listening has eight different types of questions. So these are the eight questions of listening. Summarize spoken text, multiple choice, multiple answer, fill in the blanks question, highlight correct summary, multiple choice, single answer, select missing word, highlight incorrect word, write from dictation. So these are eight types of questions for your listening. Okay. And your listening time is for a total of about 45 to 57 minutes, or in short, I'll tell you an average of 48 to 51 minutes. That's your total time. Are you able to understand me? Yeah. So there are eight different types of questions and listening is divided into two parts or two sections. The first section of listening is called summarize spoken text. This is your first listening question. And you have two or three of these questions and there are each question carries 10 minutes. So 10 minutes per question, you'll have two or three of these questions to write in your test. Each question is for 10, min uh, 10 minutes, 10 points, and you get points even for writing because your writing skills are used because you're writing a summary, you get points even for writing. Clear? Yes. Any doubt? Uh, no. Actually, uh, this summarized spoken test carries how many marks? So it carries a total of two po uh, uh, 10 points. So you're marked like this. So your grammar gets two points, vocabulary two points, spelling two points, content two points, form two points. So you get two points for each of these criteria and thus the total question is for 10 points. Okay, so this, uh, this relates to the writing as well, yeah? Yes, so you get about four points to writing, not entire mm -hmm. 10 points, but you get four or five points to writing. Clear? Yeah. So the second question type is called multiple choice, multiple answer. This is not an important question type. So this is section one of your writing. Everything is for 10 minutes. So if you have two questions, it's for 20 minutes, three questions, it's for 30 minutes. That's all. Your section one is finished. Now we are going to section two. Section two will have seven different types of questions, seven types of questions. And you have a remainder of 18 to 21 minutes. Clear? Yeah. So out of these seven questions, multiple choice, multiple answer is the first question. 
So you'll have two or three of these questions. Please mark it as not important, unimportant question. Not important for you. You already know that, right? Yeah. Do you have so, it? yeah, go on. Uh, there is no negative marking in the multiple choice question, multiple answer, yeah? There is negative marking. So I'll tell you there is a hack for this question. So what happens in this type of a question? Multiple choice, multiple answer. You'll have two or three of these questions. So what happens in that question is an audio is being played. So an audio is played and you have options given to you. So multiple answer means there is more than one correct answer. But if you choose a wrong answer, you get negative points, negative one. So there is a hack that most of the time the answer is set to be the third option in your PTE exam. Did you know that already? Uh, yes, but it's your sure what there's. Yeah, it is sure. That's why I, yeah, it is sure. So one of the answer is definitely the third option. Okay. So, so, so every time we got the this uh, five option or less than five or six sometimes sometimes you get six so it's always more than four all the time so if you uh, more than four yes okay so third option okay third yeah. option each time you choose a third option you get one point the the key is not to choose another option because you're taking a risk there is mm. a big uh, there is a there is negative marking so if your answer is wrong you're taking a risk so especially for multiple choice, multiple answer, it is for sure that your third option is the answer. Yeah, okay, that's good. So you'll have two or three of these questions. If you have two questions, you have one point in your pocket, three questions, you already have three points in your pocket. Kia? Yeah. Now we'll go to the other types of questions. So the other question type is, uh, the next question type is highlight correct summary. Mark it as not important. Can you mark it as not important? Highlight correct summary? Is not important. Okay. So here also what happens, let me show you. An audio is being played and you have options given to you. So they want you to choose which of these options are the right summary. So every time you see options in your PT exam, don't think, simply choose the third option. Okay. Any doubts? Uh, no. Now I want to tell you that for this, you can actually use your mind. You can try and think but don't take more than one minute to actually at, uh, come to your conclusion. So, maximum, so if, you get, uh, if you get some confusion, so directly go in the option third. Yes, directly okay. go to the third option. So this is an open secret. I think everybody knows this. Um, so how did you understand this from the internet, is it? Yeah. Okay, give me a minute. Polar, uh, you can't um, solve it because of, um, you can't attempt it on real PTE, is it? Or is it because I'm talking, you can't attempt it? Uh, okay. Do you want to go out of Zoom and do one and then come back? Do you want to log out of Zoom? Practice one, just one, and then come back? Okay, sure. So when you come back, Balor, uh, uh, copy the text, okay? Or take a picture and post it on chat, it doesn't matter. Or you can just share your Word document. Thanks. 
So for highlight correct summary, choose the third option if you can't arrive at the answer. Mark it as not important. Do not practice it at home. The next question yep. type is multiple choice, single answer. So what happens here? You will be listening to an audio. Single answer. An audio is being played and you're given options in the form of bullet points. So you'll have to choose the right answer. Every time you choose the right answer, you get one point. And there is only one correct answer. So the right answer, there's a high probability that it's the third option. So you'll have two or three of these questions. If you get two questions, two points, three questions, then three points. So you can use your mind to think, but please don't take more than one minute because you're managing your own time. Any doubts? Uh, no, actually when we get the option like this, so we have to just focus on the option C, third option. Yes. So while the audio is played, for this you have an advantage. It is not like reading. So while the audio is played, you can go through your options. So you yeah. read your question, what the speaker believes is likely to happen in the future. You can go through the options and try to choose the answer. But mm -hmm. don't take time more than a minute to end up at the right answer because you do not have time. You need your time for right from dictation. Oh. So don't waste your time for these types of questions. Clear? Yeah. The next type of question is uh, write a highlight incorrect words and fill in the blanks. So you have three important questions. Fill in the blanks, highlight incorrect word and write from dictation. Okay. Uh, through, throughout your multiple choice, there is one more question which I forgot to tell you. So one more not important question, which is called select missing word. Another not important question which is called select missing word. What happens in that question is audio is being played. The speaker is speaking, but he's not completing his speech. He's yeah. cut, cut off in the last part. And you have to choose what is the last word. His last word is always the third option. Okay. Okay, so four questions, which is not important. Multiple choice, multiple answer, multiple choice, single answer. Select missing word, highlight correct summary. Four questions, not important for you. Clear? Yeah. Now we go to important questions. The first important question is, it, uh, is your fill in the blanks. This is very important because it also gives you points to writing. So from here, you get a minimum of uh, at least 15 to 20 points towards your writing. 12 to 15 points is minimum towards your writing. So your spellings are very important here and capitalization is important. So what happens in this question type? An audio is being played, okay? And you have the script of that audio, transcript of that audio on your screen. Audio is played, you have the transcript of that audio on your screen. So this transcript has blanks in between. So your job is to listen to the audio and fill in the blanks. Each time you fill in the blanks, you get a, correctly, you get a point to listening, a point to writing, equal transferable. Clear? Yeah. So what is the strategy for this? Please pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you. So pay complete attention. What is the strategy? How to attempt this question type? So. Your eyes is on the screen, okay? Your hands are on the paper. So as the speaker is telling the missing word, without taking your eyes off the screen, you write down your missing word, one below the other, one below the other, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you know the first word is for the first blank. Second word is for the second blank. Suppose you miss a word, you put an X and write the next word below it, okay? Mm -hmm. So like this, can you, I don't know if you can see. Uh, not clearly. Can you see this? Uh, yeah. So you write it one below the other. And if you miss mm -hmm. a word, put an X and write the word below it. Clear? Yeah. So the reason is you will not miss center. Otherwise, if you write one next to the other, there's a big chance that you will miss center it. Any doubts? Uh, no. 
So always pay attention to the form of the word, whether it is in the S form, ED form, or anything. So before yeah. the audio, before the audio starts playing, there is about seven seconds for you. So in that seven seconds, just go through the blanks and see where they are placed and all that. Okay. Actually, I confused with this one. Uh, this the yes sound. Yes. Mostly, I I make a mistake with this yes sound. Sometimes I put the yes sound. Yeah. Yes. That's a big uh, confusion that many of them, many of us possess. So, uh, what about the next one? The next important question is highlight incorrect words. words. So that is an important question. So what happens here is highlight incorrect word. You see, an uh, an audio is played, and the transcript of that audio is already given to you. So your job is to match if the audio is. Matching with every word, every word in the audio should match to every match with every word in the transcript. So every time a word is not matching, you click on it and you highlight it. Mm -hmm. So this question has negative marking. Any doubts? I uh, know. So it gives you points to reading. It gives you about four to five points towards reading as well. Anything you don't understand? No, it's fine. It's actually, quite I like this <laughs> highlighted correct word. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, but you have to be careful because it has negative marking. So mm -hmm. we go to the. I'm just hurrying uh, because we can all practice together. I'll just give you this briefing and we'll all practice this together. So the last question type, which is your most important question type for your PT, the most important question type, make it as very 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 important, is right from dictation. So this is the biggest priority throughout your PTE. It gives you a lot of points towards your writing. So what happens, this is in the end of your exam or in the end of your listening as well as end of your whole PTE test. So what happens is you will be listening to an audio. The audio is going to be just one sentence long. So you'll be listening to the audio. Audio is going to be one sentence long. So you have to write exactly what you hear. There is no time allotted like repeat sentences. So you have to listen and repeat exactly what you hear. So while you repeat, um, uh, these are the steps that you can follow, or this is the strategy. So read, sorry, not this. This is your strategy. So first listen to the audio and repeat. Suppose the speaker is telling, go get me a drink of water. You listen to the audio and you repeat. Go get me a drink of water and you write the initial letter. You write the first letter. Go get me a drink of water. You write the first letter of every word like this. Can you see? The sing single letter. You write the first letter of every word. Okay. And then you complete it. You complete the sentence. and then you type it in. So first repeat, then write initials, and then mm -hmm. complete the sentence, and then type mm -hmm. it into your system. After you type, proofread it for any spelling error. Clear? Yeah. Any doubts? No. Start with capital, end with full stop. Do you so already if, if you if yes. you miss some words, so we have to put extra word or we have to leave so it? If, you can, if you're looking at eight, I'll tell you to, to put only about three extra words. But if you're looking at seven, four or five extra words is allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, do you have a template for summarized spoken text? Template. Have you memorized a template for summarized spoken text? No. So you can take a picture of this and use this as your template if you want. There are many templates for summarized spoken text on the internet. This is the one that I've been using for many years now, but if you want, uh, you can use this. Take a picture, please. 
Yeah, I already take this one. So how to write your keywords? Draw four columns on your paper. Uh, on your paper, draw four columns or three lines and make four columns. When you're mm -hmm. listening to the audio, write down keywords in all the four columns, one next to the other. Are you able to understand me? Yeah. So if you're writing design, building, important, and architecture, you write it. Wait, let me show you. So you make your columns like this. Oh, uh, yeah. And you write your keywords in each column. Can you see it? Yeah. So you write your keywords like this. So you try to write at least about 16 to 20 keywords when you're listening to the lecture. Mm. And then you fill it into the template separated by a comma. Any doubts? No. So we have to put the all keywords in same place. Uh, what do you so mean? Oh, there's a Q1, K2, this was keyword, yeah? Huh. This is keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, and keyword four, like that. So how many, how many keywords we have to uh, write? So four into five, there are about 20 keywords. Okay. So try to take 20 to 24 keywords. Because you're looking at seven, it is enough even if you put three keywords. It's okay even if you put three keywords. Even if you, so there's another template. So even if you put three keywords, this is okay for seven. Mm -hmm. But you have to separate it by a comma, each one. And you have to put and before the third keyword. This is for your grammar. Mm -hmm. This is a complex sentence. I'm sorry, a compound sentence. So you have to separate it by a comma and you put third keyword. Any doubt? No. Okay. So I won't take time with you today to practice this because the other two students were doing it from till now and they were waiting. So I'll just okay. check their work and we will start practicing the section two of listening. Okay, Sajan? Yeah. So pay attention while I check their work so that you can see and get an idea about how they have done it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So Nivedita, you've done the first one below. You didn't get a chance to do it, is it? I did both. I kept. Yeah. Have so I one. saw sixteen. It is in chat. Yeah, I saw it. I'm going to check it. So Sajan, pay attention to how this is done so that you'll get an idea when you're doing it. And thank you, uh, Bolor and Nivedita, for being patient while I was explaining. The speaker provided brief information about persuasive essay. First of all, the speaker discussed about different types of, is this books or hooks? It is hooks. Okay. Comma, introduction, comma, reader's attention and previewing main points of the essay. Secondly, the speaker also mentioned facts, comma, anecdotes, real person and topic of essay. Thirdly, the speaker also highlighted thinking about the topic, shocking fact, imagery and world you're describing. In a nutshell, there was important information on conversation, comma, lead idea, cliche, emotion, and wanting to learn more. You enjoyed yourself doing this, I think. But your words are too much, girl. Okay. So this is about 75 words. So what you do is you uh, see anything extra. Uh, persuasive essay about the different types of, maybe I'll just put off, I'll remove different. Then introduction, previewing main points of essay, previewing main points is enough, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second speaker also mentioned the topic of essay. Uh, I'll write it. Thinking about topic, shocking fact, imagery, and world describing. I know when you have written a lot and it's of good quality, you feel bad when you're erasing it, but you have to strictly stay inside your word limit. Yeah. Okay. I'll take, yeah, I'll take the next one. So this is okay. No problem with that. Just taking the next one. So you, I'm okay with your summarized spoken text and you're thorough with how to do this now. The speaker provide brief information about possible purpose of network. First of all, the speaker discussed social relations, comma transfer of information and parries. 
Thirdly, the speaker also mentioned travel long distances or destination, too many travelers and multiple destination trips. Thirdly, the speaker also highlighted um, high density uh, population. In a nutshell, there was important information on reduction of density of com commuters. I'm not able to take much keywords for this that's, one. Oh, there's plenty. There's no problem at all. So there's no problem with both these summaries. I'm quite happy with that. Bolor, are you there? Or have you managed to mute me and now you're not talking? Bolor? Maybe Bolor? she disconnected her audio now. <laughs> we have to send her a chat message. Yeah, we'll do that. Oh, Bolor. Yeah, I've sent her a chat. You sent her a chat too. Let's see. Or maybe she slept off. Okay. I don't want to start without her. It won't be fair because she was waiting all this while. Do you have her number or anything? No. No. Okay, let's uh, go on. Today is a funny kind of a day. It is. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Okay. So let's go off to the uh, section two of listening. So section two of listening, you know that there are, okay, we were just thinking what happened. You finally managed to mute, mute me, is it? Hi. <laughs> okay, we, we finished with summarized spoken text and I just gave a, a briefing to a sergeant, but he's quite aware of all the questions. So it was quick. So we are starting off with section two of listening. Okay, so what happens? We are uh, discussing the remaining three important question types. So the time now is 12 o'clock. We have one hour. So we'll divide it for fill in the blanks. Uh, or maybe you can write one more summary. So I'll give you time to write one more summary. Oh, Lord. Okay, there's a new student who has joined us. So I'll give you time to write one more summary. And then uh, we'll do fill in the blanks and uh, write from dictation and highlight incorrect, uh, highlight incorrect words. So can you write a summary for question number 20? I'll play the audio here and I want you guys to write uh, a summary for question number 20. I'm going to play the audio. Do you all have pen and paper with you to take down notes? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to play question number 20. And I want you guys to follow the template, follow the columns, write four keywords, and put in your um, uh, thing in the template. So before we move on, Sergeant, have you taken a picture of the template? Yes. Okay, so are you ready to do it? Make, yeah. make four columns and take down four keywords. Bolor, you too, and Nivedita, all of us, and I'll give you about 10 minutes to do this. So at the count of three, one, two, three, and go. Both fruits and milk contain sugar, and this sugar is healthy sugar. Many people have heard that sugar is bad and think that this must also therefore apply to fruits. Unhealthy sugar is normally found in desserts, ice cream, etc. It's much easier to consume excess sugar from foods and drinks that contain free sugars. Free sugars include these same sugars, but in this case they have been removed from their naturally occurring source. Rather than being eaten as natural parts of fruits, dairy products, and some vegetables and grains. This includes sugar that is added to food and drinks by food companies, cooks or consumers. Many people drink juices, and this is a healthy approach. But directly eating fruits is better, because the human body can process it easily. 
It is better to eat a small piece of fruit, which our bodies can digest better rather than drink smoothies or more than half a cup of fruit juice because it is the same as drinking soft drinks. Secondly, the speaker also mentioned, thirdly, the speaker also highlighted theory, products, addictive consumers, and approach in a nutshell, there was informant or there was information on reduction of juice and soft drinks. Both of it is well done. This is about 57 words and maybe it does 64 words, which is pretty good. Just waiting for you, Sergeant. Have you done it, Sajan? Uh, yes, yeah, so almost I did it, but I have uh, too many or so. <laughs> how That's to... okay. So, so to... put everything, doesn't matter. Separate it by a comma and put and before the last word. Are you typing it? Yeah. Okay. Give me a couple of minutes, I'll do that. All right. 
So both of you, and I was also thinking, suppose you've taken a lot of points and you feel that you have not, uh, that you're crossing the word limit and you don't want to lose your points, you can always tell, first of all, and you can just get rid of this extra tail. First of all, and then you can just put excess sugar, free sugar and desserts. And then secondly, if you have a lot of words and you feel that you don't want to get rid of them, you can just get rid of these uh, unimportant thing. Secondly, natural parts of fruit, uh, food companies and smoothies. And thirdly, you can also get rid of the speaker also highlighted. And you can just put thirdly, direct eating uh, fruit and small fruit. In a nutshell, there was important information on drinking the same as soft drinks. So you can always get rid of those if you feel that you have to put in all your sentences and they're quite important and you don't want to get rid of them. Always get rid of the other part of the template. So will that not affect content or grammar? No, it won't affect anything that much. So don't worry about it. So your key keywords are important. Suppose you have a sentence. Suppose I've written a sentence like this. Natural parts of fruit and milk or natural... Uh, parts of fruit and milk. So, so I'll write first of all, um, natural parts of fruit and milk or sugar is found as natural parts of fruit and milk. Then secondly, and I'll just put many people drink juices and this is a healthy approach. So you just put uh, first of all, and then you put the rest of it in case you have a lot of information and you running beyond your word limit. Sajan? So uh, we can do highlight incorrect words next and then followed by fill in the blanks. So Sajan, we are starting off with highlight incorrect words. You can post the answer in the chat and then join us. Is that okay yeah. with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. So we'll... So you, oh, fluoride helps fight cat. So you know that uh, audio is played your hands are on the screen, you're moving it, you're moving your mouse throughout and you're highlighting your keywords. That's how you do it. Now for us to practice, what I want you guys to do is, um, as you're looking at the word, can you write down the words that you mean to highlight? The words that you intend to highlight, can you just write it down? And then while we are discussing, you can tell me. Is this clear? So I'll, I'll ask you guys to take turns on what words you intend to highlight. Ready? Okay, so the count of three, one, two, three, and go. Height is correlated with a lot of things. Up to a certain height, taller people make more money than the vertically challenged, and the taller presidential candidate almost always wins. Now a study finds that your height as an adult has a profound effect on your perception of your health. Short people judge their health to be worse than average or tall people judge theirs. The research was published in the journal Clinical Endocrinology. Data for the study came from the 2003 Health Survey for England. More than 14,000 participants filled out questionnaires and had their heights measured. The study only looked at how good the subject thought his or her health was, not their actual health. Questions focused on five areas, mobility, self-care, normal activities, pain or discomfort, and anxiety or depression. Men shorter than about five foot four and women shorter than five feet reported the worst impressions, but small increases in height at the low end had much bigger effects on perception than the same increases among taller people. Other studies have shown, ironically, that shorter people on average actually live longer. Okay. Bolor, can you tell me? Right. Yeah. Flatly. Flatly. Second line, third word. Okay. And residential. 
residential then questions instead of questionnaire questions this one okay yeah and then um, pain or discomfort la, la. pain or discomfort anxiety pain or discomfort yeah is that all yeah okay so that was absolutely correct did you write down or did you just memorized it i wrote down in short form okay like doctor's language okay <laughs> so we'll do the next one bolor are you ready for the next one she must have taken a break okay 1 2 3 end as dr soren the bad guy in the movie star trek generations found out blowing up a star sometimes takes a few tries such was also the case for an object called sn2009 ip it's a star in a galaxy about 80 million light years away or rather it was a star first drew attention in 2009 when it flared up brightly in an apparent supernova, a star exploding at the end of its life. But it was soon unmasked as a supernova imposter, a non-fatal outburst from a massive star that only looks like a full-blown supernova. Following two subsequent flare-ups, astronomers have now concluded that SN 2009 IP has gone supernova at last. During a 2012 outburst, the star brightened much more than usual, becoming a billion times as luminous as the sun and spectroscopic measurements revealed that gas was racing outward at roughly 8,000 kilometers per second. Speeds that high indicate a cataclysmic explosion triggered by the collapse of the star's core. The research will appear in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Astronomers now have the rare opportunity to study details of a supernova, both before and after. Okay. Consumes. Okay. And then failed. Uh, where is it? Fourth line. Fourth line filled up. Uh, fourth word. Fourth line, fourth word. So, what it was, is it? Fourth line failed. Okay, sorry. And then becoming. Becoming. <laughs> being. Yeah, uh, usual uh, being a million. Okay. And the last one is study, uh, analyze, last but one line. Last but one line, show mm -hmm. monthly notices to analyze. So uh, you missed out one, two, three, but you didn't lose any points. You gained one, two, three, four points. You didn't uh, get any negative point, but you didn't get the remainder four points. So this would get you eight points to listening. Okay. So Sajin? Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, anything? Uh, do you have the summary ready? Yeah. Can you please post it on the chat board? Okay, I'll just check this and then we can do highlight and correct words together. I haven't mentioned all of the words that I written in the book. Okay, so this is about 59 words. The speaker provided brief information about food that contains sugar. First of all, the speaker discussed about healthy and unhealthy sugar that get from desserts, vegetables, and natural fruits. Secondly, the speaker mentioned advantage of eating fruits. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, the speaker also highlighted better food for digestive system. In a nutshell, th there was important information on food that contained sugar. I think you repeated this line, I think. Last one. That contained sugar, yeah, it's the same as the first line. This point? And this mm -hmm. point, the same. So you repeated one point, but that's okay. I'm just bringing it to your notice. 
So this is for about 59 words. Did you have any confusion while doing it? Not, not it, no. Okay. So can we do a, a highlight in correct words? Uh, so I'll give you one or two words to do. So Nivedita, you will also be doing it, but Sajan will be talking. He will write down the keywords. Bolor, are you there? Okay. So, ready, Sajan? Yeah. Highlight this one? Yeah, highlight incorrect words. I'll play the audio. I want you to make note in your book about the words that you intend to highlight, that you want mm -hmm. to highlight, and then we'll discuss it after the audio ends. Ready? Okay. Yeah. At the count of three. One, two, three, and go. Cigarettes are bad for your health, but that's only if you smoke them. <coughs> if you use them to line your nest, they might actually do you some good, because birds that decorate their digs with discarded cigarette butts are less bothered by parasites. And that's according to a new study in the Royal Society Journal, Biology Letters. When building a nest, birds tend to make do with the materials at hand, or at beak. Twigs and leaves are popular choices, but what about city birds? Some reach for cigarettes, or at least the fluffy white fibers found in their filters. Scientists got to wondering whether this habit might provide the birds benefits, other than comfy bedding. So they grabbed the nests of finches and sparrows that were living on the campus of the National University of Mexico, that's in the heart of Mexico City, and they found that the nests that were festooned with the most filter fiber had the lowest number of mites. It could be that the little bloodsuckers are turned off by nicotine, or maybe they've heard about the dangers of secondhand smoke. But for the birds, a butt a day might just keep mites away. Okay. Sajin? So I didn't get any. Okay. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> Too fast. I think streamline was there. Then uh, I think fi fibers and filters were. Sorry, I got that one. Is a white. Yeah. Where is the white one? And support line when building a next. Yeah, when building a next. Decorate their digs. Uh, do with the materials at hand twigs and leaves are quite popular choices. At least the fluffy white filters and fibers they miss and I mean they interchanged, I think. Mm. So they snubbed. I think that was also one. Not they, but just snubbed. And selecting both. They found the nests were festooned. So let's look at the answer. Yeah. Nicotine last with one. Yeah. So nicotine by nicotine, most filters they snubbed then streamline. Okay, these are our answers, filters and fibers. Okay, so let's do some fill in the blanks. So while doing fill in the blanks, you know oh, that yes. your eyes on the screen, eyes on the screen, hands on the paper. So when the speaker is telling you the words without taking your eyes off the screen, you write down the words one below the other, okay? Listen carefully for the forms of the word, whether it, whether it is in the past tense, in the present tense, or in the singular and plural form. Are you ready? Eyes on the screen, hands on the paper. Beautiful building. I think we have done this in our first lesson. So we'll just do from random. So maybe from question 10. At the count of three. One, two, three, and go. Put your answers in the chat. One, two, three, and go. I think it's really important for young people not to feel restricted in their choices and also to be aware of the choices that are available to them. And obviously the media has an incredibly important role to play in that. I think we tend to talk about science as this big kind of monolith, but of course, actually it's this beautiful multifaceted thing. You know, there's almost something for everybody there. And there are so many different aspects of it. You know, somebody that's going to be attracted to working in biology might be a very different person from somebody who's attracted to engineering. I suppose it's about knowing the breadth of opportunities that are out there. And so anything that universities and broadcast media can do to make sure that those opportunities are visible. Put your answers in the chat, please.
restricted incredible aspect opportunity good restricted you're there bolor i thought you've gone for a break i called you restricted incredibly science aspects opportunities restricted incredible you missed out one aspect opportunity so let's look at the answer incredibly with ly then restricted tend then aspects and opportunities so let's do another one one two three eyes on the screen hands on the paper write it down one below the other Listen carefully. One, two, three, and go. Christine Jones. Rebuilding carbon-rich agricultural soils is the only real productive permanent solution to taking excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Pip Courtney. She's frustrated that scientists and politicians don't see the same opportunities she sees. Christine Jones. This year, Australia will emit just over 600 million tons of carbon. We can sequester 685 million tons of carbon by increasing soil carbon by half a percent on only 2% of the farms. If we increased it on all of the farms, we could sequester the whole world's emissions of carbon. Put your answers in the chat. A single answer. Okay, so let's look at the answer. The first one was permanent. Look at your spellings, permanent, frustrated with ED. That's the second one. I'm sorry. Uh, the third one is Emmet. I know he pronounced it in a strange way. He said Emmet or something like that, but the answer is Emmet, E-M-I-T. And then the fourth one is increasing. So, uh, and the fifth answer is whole. So each blank that you write correctly gives you a points to listening, a point to writing point to listening point to writing let's do one more eyes on the screen hands on the paper mm -hmm. the count of three one two three why do we need more entrepreneurs right now the entrepreneurs who create and run our businesses who play by the rules are in fact critical to our success as a nation we need them especially today business not government will end this recession government must help by creating fair rules sound monetary policy and by protecting our fellow citizens in periods when they are jobless. We have to make way for the new entrepreneurial firms that will push us to frontiers of innovation. Well done, all of you are on fire. So the first one is critical, second one is recession, R-A-C-E-S-S-I-O-N, recession. The third one is jobless, and the fourth one is innovation. So let's do the last one, and then we can do half an hour of continuous write from dictation. One, two, three, and start. An economist sees the world basically through a typical microeconomic toolkit. That involves things like thinking at the margin, rationality, opportunity cost, trade-offs. Economists, like any other discipline, rules, and its own way of seeing the world. So basically, economics, or economists in general, tend to apply microeconomic concepts like that to explain the way humans behave and to make predictions about the future.
Good job, Pilar. Make up your mind, Nivedita. Is that prediction or predictions? It is predictions. Yeah, prediction or prediction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sajin? Okay, I think toolkit. Yeah. Toolkit is one word. If you had written tool space kit, mm -hmm. then that would be wrong. Or tool hyphen kit, that would be wrong. So toolkit is one word. Second one is discipline. Third one is concepts with an S. And the last one is predictions with an S. So uh, before we move on, just bringing your attention to two things. So first thing is, I'll just erase your work. The first thing is compound words, which is important for your listening. Two, can you see my word document? Yeah. Okay, this is very important for your listening. So there are three types of compound words. Open. Close. Can I join after half an hour? Uh, we are finishing at one o'clock, but you feel free to leave. It doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. And hyphenated. So there are three types of compound words. Open, closed, and hyphenated compound words. So open compound words are words like um, post office. That is one word, but we write it with a space. Post space office. And uh, anything else that you can think of, which is like this? Tax office. Okay, so all these are your open compound words. Mm -hmm. So if you write your open compound word as a closed compound word, you won't be getting points. So pay attention to open compound words, then your closed compound words. Okay. So closed compound words are words that is one word, but just like your toolkit you did now, mm -hmm. they are composed of two words, but they are written without a space, that's one. Then another one is words like microbiology, macro, molecular, all these kinds of words are closed compound words. So closed, if you write it with a space or with a hyphen, then that is wrong. And then hyphenated compound words. So closed also contain words like midnight, midday, and all that. Okay, so hyphenated compound words are words with a hyphen in between. So these three things are important for your listening. The compound words. So see that you have a knowledge because you'll have a lot of compound words for your write from dictation as well as for your fill in the blanks. Now the third, uh, the second thing is this rules of capitalization. Which is very important for you. So what are the rules of capitalization? Firstly, capitalize uh, names of people, names of people, places, uh, mountains. You'll have all this, seas, rivers. You'll have all this in your uh, right from dictation. Then you have to capitalize days of the week for your uh, then capitalize month name, then capitalize uh, designations like Mr. Okay, uh, Mrs. and all that, you have to capitalize it. Then what else? You'll have names of planets, planet names. You'll have Mercury, Venus and all that planet names, capitalize it. Uh, then you will have names of rivers as well, capitalize it. If you come across names of any of these, capitalize it. Then mm -hmm. you will also have directions. So do not capitalize if he says, or if your right from dictation says, he turned north, then north need not be capitalized. So directions as itself need not be capitalized. But if it says north Pacific, north east 
um, Pacific or Northeast America, then if it is in along with a place or if it is a part of a place, then you capitalize your directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what else you need to remember for capitalization uh, days of the week, all this, um, you have to capitalize languages. So you will come across languages. So English, Spanish, all these languages you have to capitalize. There is no need to capitalize fields of study. Suppose the sentence says physics and English, you need not write physics in capital. So physics can be in small and then English in capital. Nationality in capital, Indian, Chinese. So nationalities has to be capital. Language names in capital, anything else that I should forget. Okay, movie names, all this you will know. Titles um, of books and movies capitalize it, uh, poetry. So you'll have words, uh, someone's words. So there was a summarized written text where, a uh, so spoken text where they said about uh, John Milton's Paradise Lost. So P in capital, L in capital. So titles of books and movies, poetry, whatever it is, capitalize it. Uh, okay, names of holidays. Capitalize it like um, Christmas, Queen's birthday, all that, names of holidays. You will have this in your summarize spoken text. Capitalize these. Then you will need to capitalize uh, names of holiday, event names. Like World War one industrial revolution capitalize titles okay i mean sorry names of events any doubts so three two things to remember compound words and then rules of capitalization so shall we continue with our practice yes. let's start off with uh, right from dictation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this, you know the drill, listen, repeat and take initials, complete your initials and uh, complete your sentences and then type it in. Start with capital and with full stop. So let me show you the drill again. So for your right from dictation, Listen and repeat. Can you see my slide? Listen, repeat, and take initials. Listen, repeat, take initials, then complete your initials, and then type your answer. Sorry. And then proofread for your... Uh, so listen, repeat, and take initials or short forms. Complete your answer. Type the answer, and then proofread for spelling, grammar. Uh, don't worry about the meaning. If you're confused, add extra words add about more than three words, three maximum, stick to four if you're uh, looking at seven. But if you're looking at eight, try not to add more than two or three, okay? So I, any doubts? So this has to be followed. So the maximum amount of time is a minute and a half for every sentence that you hear. Ready? Okay. Yep. So we're just making it like a quick drill. So we, I'll time you for everything for a minute and a half for every um, every question. Let me set the timer. Okay, I'll start it as the audio plays. So. The library is located on the north side of the campus.
You have about 30 seconds left. Good. But why is library in capital? Mm -hmm. Because it's place, it shouldn't be in capital. No, only if it's the name of a place. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. So, uh, Bolor? Yeah, I'll go there. Okay. Um, I know I behave like a slave driver sometimes, but so it'll all pay off, you know, you'll get your scores. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, and go. Physics is the key subject to know the world and understand the universe. It's already shown. Oh. <laughs> Six, six, the key subjects. I thought I got rid of it, it's still displayed. Okay. I forgot the first half, sorry. First half, okay. It was actually displayed. Um, I didn't realize it until for all suggest. Physics is the key subject to know the world and to understand the universe. Ready for the next one? One, two, three, and go. You will study two core and three optional modules. Study core three. Are you guys writing it down first? Are you writing it or you're directly typing it? I'm writing it down first. Taking and the then typing it. Way. Okay. You will study two core and three optional modules. You will study three optional modules. So you will study two core, study two core and three optional modules. Oh. You will study two <laughs> core and three optional modules. You will study three optional modules. So below you'll get one, two, three, and then four, five, six, six points to listening, six points to writing. Ready? One, two, three, and start. The library is located on the north side of the campus. Thanks, the library. <laughs> now I totally understand that it is located in the north side of the campus. Yeah, I already remember that. <laughs> I hope it appears in your exam. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so that's... Uh... What, that's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points to listening, eleven points to writing. Ready for the next one? Ready or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The school theatre study helps students to exercise their activities.
the school title is that it helps the students who accept it. <laughs> Ready for the next one? Yeah. One, two, three, and go. You have the timer here, a minute and a half. Is Poverty ago. exists everywhere, but the situation. Sorry, I'll play it again. One, two, three, and go. Poverty exists everywhere, but the situation is improved. This is the answer. Poverty exists everywhere, but the situation is improved. Good job. So no paraphrasing. Repeat when you're writing down. Okay, ready for the next one? One, two, three, and... The coordinator runs courses with continuous assessments. Good. Uh couldn't catch up. Is it assistance or assessments? So the coordinator runs courses with continuous assessments. Okay. So when you're writing your initials, are you writing the small S for courses and assessments on top so that you just remember? I heard it as assistance. Okay. So uh, when you hear the, uh, the plural form of the word, write the small S on top. So that you know uh, the, when you're completing your initials that it is in the S form. Ready for the next one? Yeah. One, two, three, and start. The financial market reacts with you to political uncertainty. Okay, this is the answer. The political, the financial market reacts wildly to political uncertainty. Ready for the next one? One, two, three, and go. Often people do not listen to understand, they listen to respond. Love this one.
let me also attend so the answer is often people do not listen to understand they listen to respond Okay, one last one for today, and then we'll close for today. One, two, three, and go. The sports teams practices on Wednesdays and plays on weekends. Sorry, I couldn't catch. Yeah. Okay, I'm just posting one as well. So start with capital and with full stop. So the answer was the sports team practices on Wednesdays and plays on weekends. So practices on Wednesdays and plays on weekends. So did you see that the sentence has a wrong subject verb agreement, but even though we have to write exactly what she said, the sports teams, so this is in the plural. So the verb has to be actually practice, but yeah. it is, we have to write what we have heard, even though it is wrong. Okay. Okay. So that's all uh, uh, ladies for today and I'll see you again tomorrow. Can we do writing tomorrow? Let's do yeah. writing and yeah. then, uh, we'll cover speaking because writing is, it depends on us, right? How fast we write it. So let's do writing tomorrow. Uh, maybe we can do an essay together. So it won't be a lot of time. I'll post in the, the template with blanks and we can just fill in the blanks so that we don't take a long time and then we can start off with speaking. Okay, so I'll see you I guys. Have a question for this uh, writing from dictation. Yeah. Does it start with easier one and by the end it will get difficult or it is, it is the same thing? Uh, the thing is, uh, the questions will at least be of 10 words. There will be one difficult one of the three. There will be one difficult question. The other two would be just nice for you to attempt. Okay. okay. All right, then. Uh, you find this easier than repeat sentences? Yeah, I, quite, I found it quite... Sometimes the slang is, I mean, very different to understand. Yeah. yeah. With practice, I guess it will be easier. I think they use that text-to-speech, you know, that AI. That's when it is difficult to understand. Mm. Otherwise, it's okay. All right, then. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.